Shakespeare? Make it so these guys can't fucking fight. Right. Make it so there's no outlet. Yeah. Make See it what so happens. That, yeah. Tie them down. Make them watch opera. Yeah. They'll go. They'll hook out on you. Remember fucking. Uh, <laughs> remember I ran Barkley. Yeah. There was some after some fight. I ran Barkley. The guy asked him. Said, "So if you weren't fighting, what would you be doing?" He said, "I'd be robbing your house right now." <laughs> you know. And those dudes were fucking serious. I mean, if you ask those guys in boxing, some of the guys from the old days that came from boxing, they'd be fucking dead or in jail or doing something bad. You know, boxing yeah. and, and, and a lot of other combat sports has taken people out of the streets and fucking, dude, me and Mike Tyson have talked about this for hours, for fucking hours about it. He, he talks about what he would have been doing if he didn't fucking, if, if he, first of all, he didn't hook up with Cuss and he didn't go up there and, and, he, and he didn't, he said, Cuss broke me down as a fucking human being and then built me back up. And he said, I honestly, truly believe that me and him were put together because he's the only one that could have fucking done it. Because let me tell you what I would have been doing if I didn't meet Cuss and I didn't get into boxing. Yeah, he had so much respect for that guy as a trainer and so much respect for him as a father figure that it like inspired him to, to greatness. It yep. inspired him to focus 100% on pleasing that guy because yep. that was the first guy to really show him love and to really show him respect and to have, have faith in him. And then under him, all of a sudden, all these great things are happening, all the success is happening, so it reinforced his love for him. And he talked about how much fucking anger he had inside yeah. of him at that time. Yeah. He had a lot of anger that mm -hmm. needed to be uh, you know, expressed. He, yes. Well, you watch those combinations he throws when he's training with Cuss. There's a video of him. I think, I think it's. I don't know if it's Kevin Rooney or Teddy Atlas or who's working with him. But he's throwing off combinations on the bag, and he's probably like 18 years old. And it's like, da -da 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 and you're just watching it's these sick. ridiculous, sick. ruthless, violent combinations like no one has ever thrown before. I don't give a fuck about Joe Lewis. Muhammad Ali was the greatest, uh, yes, a, a great cultural figure, a great boxer for his era. I think Mike Tyson was the greatest freak that's ever existed. I, I don't agree, think there's man. ever been anybody like that. I agree. The Marvis Frazier fight? You remember that oh, fight? Oh, fuck yeah. Jesus Christ. I know. That was as close to a murder as you could watch on television. Dude, when you start to watch the old fights of Tyson coming oh. up, there's guys that he just fuck, oh. fucking murdered. Murdered. Right? Frank Bruno fight oh. just clubbed and, him. And I, at the, at, back at the time, when I was first coming up and, you know, in, in, in boxing, right, there was a gym called Golden Gloves. And Golden Gloves was the first gym that I worked out of in Vegas. And... Uh, they used to shut the place down for Mike when Mike would come in, right? So he'd come in and train. There would be fucking 50 brand new cars that would pull in the fucking park. It was just <laughs> crazy. Dude, it was craziness. The aura that surrounded Tyson at that time and just all the crazy shit that went on. But He had tigers. Yeah. They, he had they, tigers. Everlast made a special bag for him. So they'd come in and take down the bags in the fucking gym, the real bags, and they'd put up these special bags that were fucking this big. They were just massive. You couldn't put your arms around them, right? When he would hit a regular fucking bag that you would buy, you know when you break a firecracker in half? That's what the fucking bag would look like when he would hit it. The fucking thing would snap in half this way and come back this way. The fucking power that this guy had when he punched, you had to be there to see it in person to really believe it. Like you said, yeah. the combination you see him throwing on the bag... And, and just if when you saw it in person, you were just like, "What the God, fuck?" I would love to see that in person. You need to see what you have to do is you have to go see his fucking stand up. You show told me about does. it, yeah, bro. If you even remotely like Tyson back in the day, the Mitch Blood Green story that he tells, I'm not even gonna <laughs> fuck with it because you got to see Tyson tell it. <clears throat> what it is it now? Is awesome. He's he just he's on tour right. He just called me today. He just called me today. He's he's got a reality show. What? So he asked me to be in his reality show. Oh, my God. So I start filming his reality show with him, like, next week. Oh, my God. And it's the odd couple. It's Mike and Dana. Yeah, da -da -da -da. no. It's, it's not just me and him. It's just <laughs> I, I'm fucking doing a cameo or something. I don't know what he wants from me, but the, every time he asks me to do him a favor, I'm like, dude, I do anything for Isn't you. it weird when Mike Tyson I, calls yeah. you? Do you look at your phone and go, holy yeah. shit, Mike Tyson's calling yeah. you. I fucking, dude. Tyson is my favorite all time. You know, I fucking love Mike Tyson. Yeah, I, he's one of my favorite all time fighters as well. There was uh, nothing like a Tyson fight. Yeah, exactly. They were different. They were different experiences. So true. You know, when you saw him fight somebody, like, Jesus Christ, what how is about, Tony Tubbs going to do to him? How about you know? when you're watching? I don't give a fuck if you were there live, which I was very lucky that I was able to do that. You know, go to a few Mike Tyson fights live when he fought. <sighs> or if you were sitting at home watching TV. 
as soon as they fucking showed him on camera walking out, you just yeah. fucking got the goosebumps and yeah. went, oh my He was God. so terrifying. I love that scene in, in the movie Tyson where he talks about what's going through his mind. All his insecurities go away by the time he gets to the cave, where he kind of, time he gets to the ring, rather. Yeah. That is such a great, the way he's talking through it there. I'm a god. I'm indestructible. <laughs> there's nothing better. There's nothing. I mean, when you watch a Tyson documentary, yeah. it's fucking awesome. You just, yeah. you're in awe. I, I just. Yeah, it was a completely different cultural experience than like the Muhammad Ali era must have been. Because yeah. the Muhammad Ali thing was like, Muhammad Ali was d different because he was so much more admirable as a human being. Like what he did was like, during the Vietnam war he said you know what man why are we going to war why why do you why are you sending me to war well i don't want to kill no Viet Cong. Right. no Viet Cong never did anything and then everybody in america was like yeah what the fuck is going on what right. what, what are you doing and then they took his i mean they made a martyr out of him by taking his career away for three yeah. years so when you see like muhammad ali you see a different thing you see like a troubled time the nixon administration and people were down on the government and the vietnam war was so unpopular when you see Mike Tyson, you just saw destruction. It was a completely different experience. I agree. It's like he was like Sonny Liston on meth. Yep. It was like Sonny Liston but moving 100 miles an hour, and there was no Muhammad Ali to stop him. There was no Muhammad Ali to, you know, no young brash kid to dethrone him with boxing. You know, I always talk about when, when, 